We have Journey Newsom on the show for the first time, coming off his impressive 38-second knockout win over Domingo Pilarte on Saturday at UFC 247, one of the best knockouts of 2020 so far. Heck of a way to pick up your first UFC win, Journey. How are you? I'm good. Feeling good. Feeling uh, nice and stable still. 38 seconds is all it took. An incredible finish. Your first win inside the octagon. How does it all feel less than 72 hours later? It, it's still pretty unreal. Um, the, the hard work and sacrifices I had to make throughout the years uh, to get me to this first UFC win, um, it still feels unreal. And I'm, I'm still living that moment. Yeah, I was going to say, like, has it sunk in for you? Like, I know once you get a few more of these under your belt, it's it's not going to feel quite as good. I mean, obviously getting a win is great, but has it all really sunk in at this point, what you were able to, to do on Saturday night? No, I don't think it's all sunk in yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even fall asleep that night. I, I was I was up uh, still just, you know, answering people's um, messages, you know, saying congrats and thanks for congratulating me and everything. But, uh, no, it hasn't sunk in yet. Um, getting... Getting the finish is is definitely surreal, and it's way obviously it's way better than a decision. And against a hometown guy, you know that that's it just tops it off. Yeah, after seeing how the rest of the card played out, you must be even more ecstatic that it didn't go to the judges' scorecards. That's true too. Yeah, I mean, I heard there was bad calling uh, on the judges' side uh, with uh, two of those fights. Maybe obviously the John Jones versus Reyes fight, but. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happy that we got the finish and we kept it out of the judges' hands. Um, the only thing that, you know, I'm kind of like, what happened is, you know, that, that fight of the night bonus, and I, just, I, I didn't get that. That kind of sucks. You know, it was a really good win. I thought just because that guy, you know, he cracked him with a head kick right off the bat, recovered well, still took him out in the first, first minute of the first round. Um, I'm not too sure how I got that bonus, but I'll try again next time. What did that head kick feel like? Did it did, did it sting you at all? Did it stun you at all? Were you hurt at all by that, or was it just like, all right, let's uh let's do this thing now? Yeah, yeah, that's basically what it was. It woke <laughs> me up. I was like, okay, this is a fight for sure. I'm in, and uh, it 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 kind of does that. I don't want to say I'm a slow starter, but uh, I need I need one or two hits to wake me up and get me into that alert zone of I'm in danger, and that's basically what happened. I was in that dream room for a second. Uh, we. We broke off twice, if I remember correctly. Uh, we threw a couple of combinations after that kick. We broke off once. I was still kind of dazed. Uh, and then we threw an, another combination, and I broke off. That second time is when I regained consciousness and was like, okay, I'm good. And he backed me up to that. Uh, he backed me up to the cage, which, you know, you are you have a long reach like that, a lanky guy with a long reach, and me as stocky as I am with power, and you come into my range, you're going straight into the danger zone. So I kind of felt like he thought he had this fight all wrapped up just off that head kick because he came rushing in, and uh, likely my hands paid. Let's. Uh, I want to live a little bit vicarious through you because I would say the chances of me landing a right hand like that at any point in my life from this point moving forward, slim to none. So what did that all feel like when you land that shot? What like what does that feel like? Like what did that particular punch feel like? Uh, I just felt like uh, any regular punch. I, I throw that uh, overhand right quite well. The weight change that I have because I'm so short and uh, stocky, um, I have I can generate a lot of power from that right hand. And if everybody's talking about the the cross, yeah, I get it. It's the the, the punch that took him out, but it, it, it's set up off that that faint jab. I threw that faint jab to get him to come in just enough to counter with that too. And he was throwing it straight too. His two was coming, you know, straight from uh, point A to point B. But the fact that I have so much power, it kind of deflected his two and went right over top and cracked him. You made your UFC debut back in June and you had lost a, a short notice unanimous decision to Ricardo Ramos. And I know the result wasn't ideal, but you got 15 minutes of cage time against a guy like Ricardo to, to build that octagon experience up, so to speak. What were you at least able to take away from that fight in Minneapolis to, to help you moving forward? That I could hang with the best. That was mostly what I took from that fight. Um, we knew that I was ready to take a UFC fight um, against a dude named Ricardo Hamos. That, that's a big name, and he's making a name for himself. I heard he moved up to 45. Uh, so when I, after that fight, 
um, I knew that, okay, this dude did not finish me. He hit me with his, you know, his biggest shot. That was a lot of momentum when you take that spinning uh, elbow uh, right to the chin, you know. And he knocked me down, but I got right back up. And I, and I knew after watching that fight that I belong here. Even stepping into that cage for the first time, there was no anxiety. Uh, a lot of people gave me a lot of uh, backlash for it uh, later that um, there was no, um, I, I had no, uh, what's it called? Uh, what am I? Jitters? Yeah, no, no UFC jitters. Yeah, thank you. I had brain fart there. Yeah, I didn't have any UFC jitters. I just felt comfortable being in that cage, and I knew right then and there that I belonged. Did it feel any different for the second go around, like with the fight week and the media days and the weigh-ins? You know, actually getting more time to prepare. What was it a bit more comfortable for fight week this time around than it was in June, or was it pretty similar? It was a lot more comfortable. Uh, I went into the Hamos fight as a yes man. Um, this is my first fight. Uh, for me and my coaches, we're new to this uh, with the interviews and having them uh, say, oh, go do this interview, go take pictures here. You know, I was just a yes man. Yep, yes, sir, I'll go here. Yes, sir, I'll do this. I even gave, uh, I feel like I gave Ricardo Hamos too much respect in that fight. It could have went a different way if I went in there with bad intentions. But the fact that it was our first UFC fight, we just went in there and said, okay, well, we deserve to be here. Let's just show them that you can put on a show. Um, but I think if I would have went there with more bad intentions, acting as if I already belong there, we, you know, that, that fight could have went another way, possibly. How was the timing of this fight for you? It was eight months or so after the fight in Minneapolis. You only had six weeks between the FFC fight and your UFC debut, if memory serves me correctly. Were you good with the timing of this one, or were you hoping to get back in there a little bit sooner? Uh, a little bit sooner, um... Are you talking about after the Hamos fight? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had surgery on my uh, left knee, uh, or my uh, my right knee, my meniscus, and uh, I would have fought in September, or I would have fought anytime they told me to fight. I, I know that UFC is, uh, before that fight, I knew UFC is looking for dudes who are just going to stay uh, straight, take fights, you know, short notice fights, um, big names, it doesn't matter, take the fight, you're a fighter. This is what Dana White's looking for, and I knew that early on through this through the start of this year because I took two boxing matches just to get my hands wet because I know that's what UFC is looking for. Look for big, exciting fighters who don't give a fuck and are ready to take fights whenever they're asked. So you're about to turn 31 years of age. You actually have the the same birthday as my father that I saw earlier today. But oh, cool. You've been competing for nearly a decade now. You know, from the AMI days to 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 get to Saturday night, but. I'm curious, since this is the first time I've talked to you, how did you get into the sport? Because I love these stories. They're always different. They come from so many different perspectives. Yeah, uh, I got into this. I used to do uh, Taekwondo when I was um, 13. Uh, I got pretty far. Like I got into like an orange belt. And at 20, I kind of wanted to get back into it. Um, I did. And I found Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, and I, I found my team, Impact Jiu-Jitsu. And I basically just fell in love with it. Right off the bat, I don't even think I remember if I knew about UFC when I started, but when I found out about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is when I, I immediately got into it and fell in love with Jiu-Jitsu. My coaches uh, basically saw something in me, so they started me off with uh, boxing, and it just kind of led on from there. Like, oh, hey, you want to maybe take a fight? You know, and I said, oh, sure, you know, that, that sounds okay, and, you know, here we are 13 years later. Do you remember that first MMA fight? Is it a little surreal to think about right now? Yeah, it's. It, I, I I've thought about it a few times um, back at the uh, Roseland Theater here in my hometown in uh, Oregon. Uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty surreal from going to just you know the local stage, and now all the the hard work and all the sacrifices that I took over the years um, are are paying off, and it's it's still surreal to this day. Do you remember the fight throughout this journey that, that you learned the most from, the one that made you feel like everything was clicking and now we're cooking with gas, so to speak, to to, to take this thing off to as far, as far as we can go? I say it wouldn't be one fight, but uh, when I turned pro is basically when I made that jump. Um, it feels like, you know, you're at certain levels to this amateur. Um, not everything's clicking together, but as soon as you hit pro, with some or most fighters, it should be like you need to know that you're going to step up 
in, in the level. You know, you're going up to the next level and you got to be ready physically and you got to be uh, ready, more importantly, mentally. And I feel like mentally, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always there mentally and that uh, I basically had to switch up and put everything together at pro. And by the time I hit pro, my first or second fight at pro, um, I knew how to start putting things together and making things look more uh, loose and make it make make it look like I'm doing everything uh, as a professional would. After a performance like that, you know, in this sport, people don't let you savor the flavor for too long. They want to know what's next and what you want to do and and all that stuff. And obviously, it was just announced that the UFC is is heading to Portland on April 11th. Fair to say that that's that's what you're shooting for. It, it's too early to tell. We could possibly shoot for that card. Uh, in the, in this fight, in this Parlante fight, that head kick, um, did fracture my, uh, my, uh, jawline just a little bit, my zygoma, it's a zygoma fracture. So we're getting x-rays, uh, later on today and we're going to see how long the healing process is for that. So if the healing process is, you know, a couple weeks and I can return to start another fight camp, you know, we're all, we're all good with it. You know, this is my hometown. I can get a big crowd out here. It'll put, it'll boost up my name even more. And, uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna wait though. We're just gonna see how this, uh, x-ray pulls out. See, uh, if we actually need sur surgery, I, w I did a uh, x-rays in Houston and they said that, uh, it's optional that I could have surgery. Um, I, yeah, I don't have to, I could let it heal on its own, but, um, this is the second, you know, hard shot that I've taken from a very dangerous fighter. So I know I can take these hits. Like I, I'm, the confidence is just building even even more that I can take these hits and still deliver some power. So I, I think I want to get the surgery done and make sure I'm good. I'm at 100. percent I can get on. Uh, if I can get on that Portland card, that's awesome. But if not, I, I won't risk it. I'll, I'll wait for another uh, card to be uh, drawn to me. Does it hurt uh, to to even speak right now, or is it all right? It's okay. Uh, I it just kind of hurts when I chew. So I'm I'm, on, I'm only chewing on one side of the mouth for right now, and. Uh, I'm not taking any medication for it. Um, I can just feel it. It's not too much of a baller, but I just know it's like right here. I just know it's there. Whether it's April 11th in Portland or another card down the road, depending on how the x-rays go and, you know, whether you have to have surgery or not, is there any sort of matchup that, that gets you excited that, that makes sense to you or are you just open to anything at this point? Yeah. Throughout this whole career, I'm basically open to anything. I'm a, uh, I'm not the one to start um, asking for names right now. I know I'm just, you know, a newcomer. No one really knows anything about me. Everybody thought Pilarte was going to win that fight, you know? Everybody who didn't know me thought Pilarte was going to win that fight. And I get it. I mean, he's, he's bigger. He's taller. He looked like he was two weight classes up, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I get it. But um, people who don't know me, uh, yeah, they thought Pilarte was going to win that fight. But me and my team, we kind of knew what was going to happen. We didn't know it was going to happen so quick, but... We knew what was going to happen. You sort of relish that underdog mentality, so to speak, that uh, people may be overlooking you just depending on the name value. Eventually, these wins and these knockouts are going to keep building up and that allure is going to be gone and taken away. But are you relishing that for now while it lasts? Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, I know that uh, people see me as the underdog and I rather have it that way because... Uh, and that's that's how I got to the UFC. People just underestimate me. They underestimate my power. And once you hit that cage and you feel those, you feel my hands, you know that you're in a fight and that I am a dangerous opponent. It's been a pretty wild year for you between, I think it was like around this time last year, you signed on with Iridium, you get your yeah. shot at the UFC, you have surgery, you come back on Saturday, you get this huge knockout and you're getting on everybody's radars. How would you describe this last year of your life? Best, uh, the best uh, successful year um, in my life so far, for sure. Um, I've taken uh, probably like two or three short notice fights. The Vegas fight was short notice. The Hamos fight was short notice. Uh, the boxing match before the Las Vegas fight was short notice. All these, all these fights were short notice because like I said earlier, I know Dana is looking for a dude who's, um, has good power. He can put on a show and is not going to sit here and ask questions about any fight. They're going to take that fight regardless. And that's, that's who I am. I'll take that fight. I'll take any fight. Whoever wants to face me, whoever they want me, want me to go up against, I'll take that fight.
Congratulations on the win, Journey. Really impressive stuff. One of the best knockouts of the year. Personally, I thought you got robbed of $50,000. They should have at least thrown you that money, at least thrown an extra bonus out there. Uh, but it was a, an incredible performance. Definitely look forward to seeing what's next for you at 135 pounds. Before we let you go, man, let the folks know where they can find and follow you on the web, social media, any shout outs, anything else you want to get off your chest. The floor is yours. Yeah, I'm at uh, Instagram, journeyj135. Same thing as Twitter, journeyj135. Go ahead and reach me there. Um, uh, my stories are pretty funny. I'm a funny, pretty funny guy. <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> if you guys want to laugh, man, just go on some social media and, and just check me out. But other than that, no, I'm just giving big props to my uh, team, uh, Impact Jiu-Jitsu, for uh, getting me this far. And we're, we're not even done. we got so much more to do in this sport. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate the time very much. Enjoy the victory, and we'll talk soon. I hope everything goes well with the x-rays and everything. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate it.